What's up guys and welcome back to Hitman 3. We are moving on to mission number two, Death in the Family. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Welcome to the United Kingdom. Alexa Carlisle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house. Meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. <clears throat> it began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the Constant. Information that may be helpful in his recapture. Perfect. So don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Here we go. Got this creepy manor out in the middle of the UK. Gonna have to kill Alexa Carlisle as well as find that case file. And um, let's get after it, man. We're gonna have our, our usual get up here. Let's just go ahead and get it started. I'm excited. Back here for mission two. Loving this game so far. Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now. The target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Nice. Good luck, gentlemen. Sounds like that private investigator is going to be our uh, best bet at some sort of a disguise. He's right here at the front gate, it looks like. Let's go. Try to get a feel for what's going on. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Got Whitmer heavy security is here. Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. I'm down, so if you guys don't know, this one apart from the actual like main missions that we want to accomplish as agent 47 this map actually has like a a murder mystery to it which i'd kind of like to try to check out okay we've got guys all over the place hold on we gotta think fast let's let's grab a coin try to get him down underneath the bridge maybe what was that noise? is that gonna be a good spot to take him out they've got gardeners they've got a maid up front A second. Good job. She see anything? I don't think she saw anything. Let me pick up my coin real quick. 
And if we disguise as this PI, I'm thinking, can we drag him down further? Oh, shoot. Okay, give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec. I'm gonna drag him back into the bushes so he can't see. Nobody can find his body if they walk by guards or anything like that. Get him all the way back in there. All right. Cool. Sorry, ma'am. Had to uh, had to take a leak. Were you here looking for me? Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Absolutely. Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and then all this security. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and uh, and I dare say I don't like it at all. Well, this is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, I could just cry. Yeah, that's that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to find another way in because we've got we've got a pistol on us. Ooh, looks like there's a, a ledge. We could potentially climb up to the second story. We could always go around back too. Let's see what we've got going on. Open. Oh, oh. It's gonna say open window off to our right there, but there's just an open window here. Perfect. In the foyer. Hello, sir. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution. Handled with absolute discretion. Results my middle name? And discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? Let's I get to work. I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. So yeah, I mean, uh, our goal is, is really primarily to eliminate her as well as find that case file, but obviously if we solve this mystery, we might get some alone time with her. It'll leave her off. The affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. <laughs> so please bear with them. Greetings, they seem sir. affected by the rather unusual situation. That's pretty insane. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Imagine showing Before up to your mom's funeral and she... Scene, I will tell you this. She shows up too. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. Hmm. However... Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. All right. A we will get to the bottom of this. 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Precisely. Okay, so... Said he was found dead in his bed. Looks like this is him right here. Let's Why see what we've got going on. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? All right, we can do that. Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Hmm... So a plant poison killed him. That kind of seems a little bit sketchy. Just gonna start looking around the room and see what this is. Could be foul play. Could be him killing himself. He does have Zachary a lot of plants was around here. New Wellington's last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Okay. Looks like he's got some alcohol here. He's got a note. Suicide note. Zachary's suicide note. Also. A sample of handwriting. 
Okay. I am haunted by horrible past choices and their all-consuming consequences. Alexa was the raft keeping me afloat. Without her, I cannot go on. Goodbye. That's sad because she wasn't actually to dead. Compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. So we want to look for... That's just to hide something in there. We want to look for other potential handwritings of his to, to make sure it's actually his. He's got a hat there. He's got a book. We do have the... You know, kind of observe option here. See what's going on outside. Newspaper there. We got a guy up here. Looks like we could potentially break this if we found a crowbar. Looks like he's got wine. I'm tempted. I mean, why not? We're on our own up here. We might as well, uh, let's grab this guy. We've got a bodyguard disguise now in case we want it. And then we have that cupboard back in the back right that we're going to be able to hide him in. It's a free kill. Ooh, I see he's got some bottles on the ground there. And then he's also got some limes next to his bed. Let me go check that in a sec. See, so yeah, I mean, technically we don't actually have to get to the bottom of this, but I feel like it'll be kind of cool. Oh, uh, it's just a kitchen knife. This dude loved his alcohol, huh? Whiskey's been scanned. Let's see what kind of intel. Ah, it's telling us how many clues we have. So we're at four out of six. Is there anything else that we can scan? Maybe like the bottles on the floor over here? No. Is there anything else of interest? Hmm. Can't scan the limes. What is this over here? A secret entrance. That's how somebody. Oh, okay. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Exactly. And then what do we have here? Mansion floor plan? Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Of course an old creepy house like this has hidden rooms and walkways and hallways and stuff like that. Okay, where's Mr. Butler? That's my question. Hmm. Gonna be honest, I'm a little bit lost. I guess we'll head this way just to see if we can find him. Looks like we might be able to go back downstairs here. This is the way we came up. Is he going to be back in the lobby? Yes. All right, sir. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Stop. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. 10 o'clock. That means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only person's here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's How can you prove that, that prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Okay, so see... It is going to open up an opportunity for us to kill her. I'm sure there are other ways to get her alone and stuff, but I I, just, I feel like solving a mystery is going to be the most most fun option. So let me take a look here. We've got our, our, our you know, our victim, Zachary Carlisle, and then we've got Gregory, the oldest child of Alexa. Gregory is suspected in the murder of Zach. Middle child of Alexa, youngest child of Alexa, wife of Gregory, and daughter-in-law to Madame Carlisle, son of Emma and Gregory, and then Mr. Fernsby. Okay. So we just, we have to go around. We probably want to, we want to go to people's bedrooms. We want to look around their rooms. We want to see what's going on. We've got Emma and Gregory's room, Rebecca's room, stuff so like how that. How does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Hmm. Who is this? 
Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Mystery soft! Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, rosy, uh, maybe not. Evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank so God he might have been a little depressed. Over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Interesting. So we're going to take a look at our intel. He's been questioned. I mean, he has an alibi that he was out with Rosie. Uh, if we could talk to Rosie, we could potentially confirm that. Uh, but that's that's going to be about all we can do until we end up going in his room. So we'll uh, we'll see we'll see about that. We're going to try to have a look around. I mean, this is it's just it's such. Talking to Madame Carla's daughter. Rebecca. Yes. She's insistent that one. She kept Hello, asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why well, I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler. Oh, of course. So the butler has something. That's a little bit sketchy. I'm just going to try to get the lay of the land here. Are you rosy by chance? No. In the world. The trophy room. Is there anything of interest in here? I don't think so. We need to talk to the people, the family. Looks like we've got some people in here. Ah, uh, this is one of our suspects. Rebecca, Carla. Can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. Was he with a girl? You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. Ed and Greg went for a pint. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. Emma. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that Oof. everything, Mr. Whitmer? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, the butler, leave his room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. Because he was up to no it's good. Probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Okay, so let me let me take a look at what we've got going on here because there's a lot of names happening. It's hard to hard to keep up with. So we've got our victim. We've got Gregory. She said Greg and Edward. So the the oldest and middle child ended up going out for a pint. So when we talk to them, let's make sure they they line up there. She says she was in her room, working, and then went straight to sleep. Uh, she said she didn't know what Emma was up to. She said that Patrick did go out, right? I'm pretty sure. Is that what she said? It should it should have it. Yeah, Patrick disappeared after dinner last night, maybe in some sort of trouble. Um, so we've got that, and then we've got Mr. Fernsby, who we've already kind of talked to and, and didn't Anything really lead anywhere. 
Now we're good to go. So we've got, is this Rebecca here? Emma Carlisle. Emma, sorry. Can you tell me where you were Names. yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. <laughs> How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? And he was killed by a plant. In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Hmm. And again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Doesn't seem like Emma likes Alexa very much. I don't think that's much to go off of. We kind of got that, that same vibe from Rebecca too. Is this... Ah, this is Gregory. Gregory Carlisle. Can you the middle tell me one. where you were yesterday evening? Well, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. Perfect. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> Confirmed that <laughs> alibi, too. Uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Oh. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? I don't like Anything this guy. Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Hmm. So I don't, I don't like that guy. I think he's an ass, but I don't think he did it. Uh, is there anybody else in here? Got a very creepy photo on the wall right there. Let me see. We've got another thing over here. Some more butlers. Backyard. Bro, it's just such a big house. Dining room. Who are you? Ah! Let's see if he confirms. So that last one, it confirmed about the, the pints. It confirmed about the, the migraine. Edward Carlisle. Everything's adding up so far. Except for the butler. Night. Oh, yes. This dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He never admitted it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting. And wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Lines up. I have a speech to write. Can you tell me about... He's got a eulogy for his living mother. I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. She didn't tell me about did that. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff... All the company he had. Anything else I can do to help? Did you notice anything else out of the audience? This guy seems genuine. Mean, apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking, Zachary found dead in his bed this morning, or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy. <laughs> and mother will surely have strong opinion on it. Afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. Not only did he think his mom was dead, show up for a funeral and then she shows up. Knocks him out of whack a little bit. He's going to have to, to give a speech yes, hi, at the funeral that Edward. she's going to listen to and judge him for. I, I do not I do not feel, you know, good for that guy. So, uh, it looks like alibi confirmed for both Gregory 
and Edward. So we need to... Ooh, a kitchen back here. We need to find the rooms. Where are these people staying? I know some of them said they were staying in a hotel. This is the foyer. That's like the mud room. Maybe they're upstairs. The bedroom's upstairs. We need to start looking through stuff. We've questioned everybody. We need to, to make... How are you? Make sure that their answers line up, dude. This this house is just so big; it's so confusing. Let's just look at the mini map. We're gonna we're gonna pick random stuff like this. Is not a bedroom. Ah. Okay. We've got a locked door here. A window. A bathroom. Let me see what we've got going on in here. Can overflow the sink. This is just a guest bathroom, I think. Okay. Let me see. Got a lawyer in a small office somewhere. Let me see if we can maybe maybe move around here. See if we can get in. This must be somebody's bedroom, I'm assuming. Or room of importance, who knows. We gonna have an open window? We do, let's go, okay. No big deal. All right, we're gonna try to get in, climb through the window. Is this somebody's room? Rebecca's room, okay. She's got a computer here. Investigator laptop. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. So she night. told the truth. At least partially. We know she was in her room. We don't know for sure if she stayed here or whatever else. Trying to see if there's anything else of importance in here. I do see that photo on the wall. Use our camera, make sure there's nothing to scan. Just a little window back there, okay. So there was something... I thought there was something else, but I guess it's just this. Photo of a dog? Is this another secret door? Are you kidding me? Found another secret room. Interesting. Okay, have we, I mean, have we, there's two clues in here. We need to find the second clue before we move on. Make sure there's nothing in here. There's not, okay. Um, there's a clock over here. Alcohol, can't scan that. Maybe check her bedside tables. Just a clock. Anything in here, no. Got a little tablet there. I don't know what else we're looking for in here. Ah, hold on a second. Found a notebook. What does this have? Uh, the notebook. Found the bedroom. Notes concern various Carlisle assets as well as a boardroom meeting the night before. The handwriting does not match Zachary's suicide note. So I'm going to assume... If it does not match it, then that's going to exonerate her. Rebecca Carlisle has been has been crossed off. Okay, that's that's exciting. Um, I guess. I mean, if we just get out of here, move on to our next. That was that bathroom. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of your death? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want the security her to guards were talking about this Edwards too. If I die. <gasps> we're not fearful she will be in trouble if she knows. She will start digging when she realizes things don't add up. Inevitably getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully she'll never have to get involved at all. Hmm. Might be of interest Hello, to us, I'm not sure. Again, I am very, very confused as to where we are. Is this another bedroom back here? Nope, that's... This is a bedroom, though. That leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Shoot. There's a bathroom here. Let me see if we can head on outside and see if we can sneak in another window. So we've... Three suspects are down. There's a couple left. We'll have to see if uh, we can get to the bottom of this. This is just a little bit sketchy out here. Also gonna have to find a way to kill 
the the head you know HBIC and we're gonna have to to find that case file apparently there's something about how like the butler and Rebecca have one or something like that I'm not sure okay so this is gonna be interesting we've got a letter from Emma's mother here now this is interesting 47 a letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. Oh. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. Oh. So that would give Emma motive, potentially. Let me take a look at this. Um... Alexa and Zachary's older brother and the two younger siblings murdered him. Apparently the two murderers were unaware that Emma's mother was expecting the child. Interesting. Okay. So we've, we've got to find some clues in here. First and foremost. Greenhouse keychain. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Hold on a second. He was killed with a poison by flowers. Where would you find that in the greenhouse? That's interesting. So we've got something here. Missing a propane flask. We've got a walking stick over here, it looks like. Walking cane. Do you like dags? Is that a clue? Old cane with a knob shaped like the head of a bulldog. I'm not sure why that's a clue, but... All right. Shoes. In the corner. Let me take a look at this. Uh, shoes and footprints found in Emma and Gregory's room. Interesting. Does that mean anything, though? We might have footprints somewhere. That puts us at four to four clues in this room, so I guess... I mean, nothing really, you know, damning here. No no evidence that's really adding up, but uh, I guess I guess we've got to move on. So we've got Zach's room down, Emma and Gregory's room's down, Rebecca's room. We need to check Mr. Fernsby's office, accessible through the storage room and the staff quarters on the ground floor of the mansion. We need to check the greenhouse. And there's miscellaneous. Okay. All right. So let's... I mean, I, I say we go... Let's go check this greenhouse. Situations, right? I Mr. should Fernsby, my... maybe get back to... All right. Later. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say nothing. Y'all just keep doing your thing. All right? I, I respect it. I'm going to assume the greenhouse is going to be somewhere on the grounds outside. So I think we go check that. We have a, a door out of here by chance. Nope. To this... Do you like, um, reading? You look really smart in a good way. This guy's chatting her up. Really? I feel like that kind of helps with his alibi that he was he was talking to somebody else. Let me get outside. How do I get outside? Through here. Looking for a greenhouse. Is this the front door? That might be the front. Oh, this is no, that was the side. Here's the greenhouse. Okay. We're gonna be alright. Ethel looked everywhere. Oh, you've got to be kidding. No power, no portrait. Oh, Madame Carlyle will be furious. Uh, is she expecting... Got a new opportunity there, but we're hot in the trails of uncovering this mystery, and that should hopefully let us in with, with Miss Carlyle here. So let's just head inside the... Ooh. We need a key, or we need a crowbar. So maybe like a, a back door we can go through or something? I don't believe can't go through that. We don't need just run through his plan. The spring seedlings yesterday. Yes, sure. But he he was upset believing his sister was dead. I'd say worried about how things would be handled with Gregory and Emma taking over. I said they let him stay here, but Ethel was sure Emma would throw him out first chance she got. Emma. And now we'll never know. Oh my, you're taking this hard, aren't you? A lot of things are are pointing towards Emma. Can I talk to them by chance? Nope. Can't talk to you either. Nope. Ah, crowbar. I'll pick this up. Let's go ahead and put that away for now. So now we're going to be able to break into this greenhouse, but obviously we're not going to want to do it in front of all these watchful eyes. Maybe one of them will eventually walk in the greenhouse and we can just kind of... Just kind of follow them in. When there's nobody really around. Put it away. Pretend like nothing's there. Okay, here we go. We are inside of the greenhouse. Oh. 
technically we're allowed in here too. Uh, it's it's not saying that we're in like a, a you know protected area. So there's a radio we could turn on as a distraction. What do we have here? A poisonous flower. I'm gonna pick up all that we can. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used though. So th they must have been using these poisonous flowers to make some sort of a, a liquid to put in his whiskey that he drank and then died. Can we scan anything? Scan the plants. I don't see anything. Are there any like footprints? Maybe those high heeled shoes that we saw. Is there anything on the ground? Nope. Hmm. What else do we have? There's stuff on the table over here. Boat key. Okay, that might help us get away. Ah, book here. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. Interesting. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. So it was Emma. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Do you want me to be honest? There are more secrets to uncover. I, I mean, I, she was definitely towards the top of the list. It, it, she just gave me the wrong vibe. She obviously didn't like her. She obviously was excited to kind of run the family, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I was also a little bit sketched out by Mr. Fernsby's. So I, I kind of, before we go and talk to him, I kind of want to go find his. Now, do we, I know they said we have, I think, don't we have a, a, a map? Map. Okay, so we want Mr. Fernsby's office said it was on level zero in the staff area i do remember staff toilet are we trespassing in here but he was a gentleman he gave me his coat and all rosie you need to forget about patrick no good that is the door to mr fernsby's office Let's just go in there. Also, I don't know if you guys caught it, but Rosie back there was crying about Zachary or Patrick or whatever his name is. I think it was Patrick. So that confirms that he was out with her last night. Kind of a D-bag. Mansion master key. Don't mind if I do. I really hope he doesn't come back here. Okay. We've got uh, Mr. Fernsby's list. Okay. Let me see if there's anything to analyze in here. He's got some tea and stuff. Is there anything else interesting? He's got golf clubs. Zachary's diary. S Zachary's half burnt diary. Excuse me? So the list is detailing preparations for tomorrow's pretend funeral and stuff like that. It doesn't match Zach's handwriting on the suicide note. So that, that you know, makes it sound like it wasn't him. Zachary Carlisle's diary found half burnt in the fireplace in Mr. Fernsby's office. The diary details how Zachary and Alexa conspired to murder their older brother Montgomery and how Mr. Fernsby helped them cover it up as an accident. Zachary was still plagued by guilt. Alexa presumed dead. He planned to publicly confess his crimes. Curiously, the handwriting does not match the suicide note found in Zachary's bedroom. So it was not suicide. The butler was covering his butt. It was Emma. This is big. 100%. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother, Montgomery, 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. Pain and 47, killer. the he handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Now, why would Unless I want to... of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Why would I want to blame it on him if he didn't actually do it? I don't want to have a... the poor guy killed. Question is, where is he? I... I mean... I'm trying to think what our angle would be. Is this him? Nope, oh, that's a security guard. Uh, Mr. Butler man, Mr. Butler man. 
It's another security guard over there. I'm, I might just wait down here. We do oh, there he is. Mr. White Glove Butler Man. Yeah, I, why would we want to tell her that he did it if he didn't actually do it? I mean, it seems like nobody here is really innocent. No matter how you want to, you know, put it. But, um... I say we tell the truth, we present the real evidence, and that should to present my conclusion gain some Madame Carlyle. trust. Well, if you'll follow me, sir. All right. So hopefully this is going to get us in a room alone with Miss Carlyle. And hopefully that means that we can uh, just take her down without anybody noticing. I don't know how we're going to do that, though. Haven't really thought this far ahead. I was so focused... On solving this mystery, we haven't even actually, you know, gone after any of our main missions, but that's what makes this game fun. Using all the tools at your disposal. Dude, you walk so slow, I'm sorry. I don't... How are you today, sir? I don't mean to give you a flat tire, but like, come on, bro. You gotta walk, just, just put a little pep in the step. I really don't know why we'd want to frame him. I'm trying to figure out why the game would let us do that. Ooh, we're going all the way upstairs. There's a third level. This is so creepy, dude. The animals, the old... white folk on the walls. Just don't trust it. Hello, sir. So this must be... the big dog level. This is her quarters. This is, this is where we're going to want to... Snoop around for that case file and potentially this is kill her. Carlisle's Looking office. good, man. Please step inside. Looking good. In here? She's got mega security all over the place. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Well. It was Emma. Your niece, Emma Carlisle. Murdered your brother, Zachary. Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emma's mother, Jane who was the fiancé of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emma to reclaim what she lost. Marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral don't kill him. to speed up her installment as the lady of the house. Seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework. Used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants. Found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. Not too shabby. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way then. I mean, I'm always down.
Did that safe just come out of the wall? I'm pretty sure that picture just moved. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope you get in. It's a naked alert. I need some privacy. Thank you. No problem, Reed, man. Up. So I'm gonna pick this up. Do you Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. What are the odds we're gonna be able to just walk out here and just push her off? Huh? Uh, Look! Uh, Met the same fate! Mission complete. Well done, 47. What the Greetings, fuck? Sir. How you doing? Man, that was quite the uh, quite the tumble she took there. How do I get out of here again? Go to, back downstairs? So we can get off the exit. We, we have that boat key that we found. Or we could potentially do something else. I'm not really sure. Dude, that was so clutch. Alright, how do I get out? We have to go downstairs again. I just don't remember how to do that. I think... Out here. Perfect. They found her body, so we would have get out of here quick. I mean, we could have, you know, choked her out or something right there. Done something a little bit better than just pushing her off the balcony, but hey. You know. It is what it is, baby. She oh, kind of had that coming. Way. That's how she no, killed okay about those she um, well, Montgomery all those years ago, so. Karma always finds a way, baby. We should ideally just be able to walk right out of here, right? Pretty sure. I'm a detective. I'm going home. Let's go. 47. They're everywhere. Go, get out. It's the Constantine. Shit. What? Our boy's in trouble. Let's get the heck out of here. You owe him nothing. 47. Don't respond, just listen. Diana can't help you now. You need to find Olivia. She will know what to do. <laughs> I wish there had been more time. Constant. Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah. How about now? Over here. Cover me. Walk away. <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Yeah! Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. 47's contract to assassinate her parents. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. 